So, who are the heroes of young left-wingers these days? Che Guevara, Karl Marx, Jeremy Corbyn? No, apparently it's Osama bin Laden. This week on TikTok, videos of young people celebrating the virtues of Osama bin Laden have been going viral, and all because they've suddenly read his Letter to America. That was a piece that was published on the Guardian website in 2002. Now, the Guardian has since removed the letter, which isn't the best approach because it lends a kind of weird credibility and glamour to the nonsense that he was spouting. But, as you can imagine, in the letter, Osama bin Laden argues that it's all the West's fault and he had no choice but to murder thousands of civilians on 9-11. In fact, he claims the right to murder civilians and very specifically mentions Palestine as the justification. He's also clearly obsessed with Jews, using the word ten times in this very short letter, in phrasing that, let's be honest, is reminiscent of the kind of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories found in the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. So Osama bin Laden writes, the Jews have taken control of your economy, through which they have then taken control of your media and now control all aspects of your life, making you their servants and achieving their aims at your expense. And he wrote, your law is the law of the rich and wealthy people who hold sway in their political parties and fund their election campaigns with their gifts. Behind them stand the Jews who control your policies, media and economy. It's what you might expect from an anti-Semitic mass murderer. And yet the kids love him. So let's have a look at what some of them are saying. Everyone to stop what they're doing right now and go read. It's literally two pages. Go read A Letter to America. And please come back here and just let me know what you think, because I feel like I'm going through like an existential crisis right now, and a lot of people are, so I just need someone else to be feeling this too. I need you to stop what you're doing and go read A Letter to America. It's wild, and everyone should read it. If you haven't read it yet, read it. This letter was insanely eye-opening. I really urge everybody to Google and read it. Go read A Letter to America. Like seriously, go read it. Type a letter to America in Google or whatever you use, then come right back. Because this makes a lot more sense. It explains so much. And I guarantee you, it's going to blow your mind. This is pretty grim stuff. So TikTok has been frantically removing the videos. And as usual, when material is suppressed, it's become even more popular. And actually, we do need to see this because we need to understand the extent of the problem. Firstly, there's the issue of history. Now, many of these young people have been taught by activist teachers who have willingly twisted aspects of their history for their own anti-Western agenda. Historical revisionism is now the norm. Look at the 1619 Project, for instance, which tried to rewrite the story of the foundation of the United States. I mean, that won a Pulitzer Prize, but was plagued with factual inaccuracies. Even their own fact-checkers raised concerns. And just today, it has been reported in The Telegraph that the prestigious academic journal History and Technology published an unsubstantiated claim about Henry Court, the 18th century ironware producer, saying that he didn't invent the iron-making process he has long been credited for, but that he stole the idea from Jamaican slaves. But when academics pointed out that there was simply no evidence for this claim, the journal's editors claimed that the article's critics were taking, quote, narrow approaches to colonial era sources and were engaging in, quote, particular race relations by taking the view that facts are facts. <laughs> well, facts are facts. Now, if it turns out that the article is correct, that's fair enough. But the editors are wrong to simply assert that something is true and then dispute the importance of factual analysis. And of course they're doing so because this particular article is an article by an activist that is calling for reparations. So there's an agenda there. And this is because ideologues from the critical social justice movement, what most people call the woke movement, are not interested in truth. Indeed, they consider the very notion of truth to be a white Western heteropatriarchal construct. They say there are multiple truths and that we should prioritize lived experience over verifiable reality. And that's the lesson that the TikTok generation have taken on board. So if they feel that Osama bin Laden was a decent guy and that the 3,000 people murdered in the Twin Towers were in fact colonizers who were complicit in the Western Imperial Project, then it must be true because they feel it. In other words, historical illiteracy has been rebranded as virtuous. And it's not just TikTok. We've uh, even seen some people on these marches that really don't understand the situation. So here are two protesters that have been chanting from the river to the sea, but they don't really understand the implications. Do you know which river and sea they're talking about, by the way? I don't know the name. Uh, the the river, uh, uh, I know the Mediterranean, it would be the sea, but no, I wouldn't know the river, no. Okay, that's yeah. that, that's, uh, that's, that's it, yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. 
And here are two protesters who then are not even familiar with the attacks by Hamas on October the 7th. Hamas invaded Israel on the 7th of October. What was your initial reaction to that? Uh, I didn't believe they did, did they, Hamas? Uh, I think so. I, honestly, like, I think I need to be a bit more clued up on like, everything that's going on. So I feel like I'm not really qualified to answer that too well. I mean, I'm not sure if I've seen anything that shows that that's actually happened or actually correct. So it isn't just that these kids know nothing about history. They don't know what happened last month. <laughs> and of course, this is really dangerous stuff. We've seen explicit anti-Semitism on the streets of London, and not just in London, but elsewhere around the country too. So here are some protesters in Luton uh, issuing a chant, which is the first verse of an anti-Semitic chant about the massacre of Jews by Muslim army at a battle in the seventh century. Let's have a look. So a chant on UK streets invoking the massacre of Jews. And we've also seen protesters calling for jihad, intifada, even one claiming that, quote, Hitler knew how to deal with these people. It's an actual quotation from a protester, by the way. Jewish schools have been forced to close, Jewish people have been openly intimidated, and all in the name of progress and peace. Well, actually, what you're seeing here is fascism. And you don't have to read Mein Kampf to know that Hitler wasn't a great fan of Jewish people. But with all the attempts to rewrite what actually occurred during that horrendous genocidal terrorist attack on October the 7th, it's starting to become clear how Holocaust denial happens, because we're seeing it in real time. Activists have spent years imagining fascists in every shadow, claiming that we live in a Nazi country, and they've now gone completely silent about open declarations of fascism on our streets. And some are even supporting Osama bin Laden. And if you think they couldn't sink any lower, I promise you, this is just the beginning.